Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. My name is Keshav and I'm the producer for this episode. Today's conversation is with Laura Watson and Ali Steven, who are both 2021 Dalhousie University accounting graduates, close friends and roommates. And they joined Sam to discuss the realities of living together and spending all of your time with someone who's doing the exact same school program. They both decided to pursue the graduate diploma in accounting from Queen's University this summer, uh, doing so right after finishing their undergrad. And they discussed, um, you know, why they chose to do that and why they chose to do it right away after finishing school and how to manage a heavy workload that comes with the Queen's program and trying to find a balance with a social life at the same time. They've both provided their LinkedIn's and emails, so I've linked those in, in the description. Um, you can reach out to them anytime. Um, if you have any questions about Dahousie or Queens, they're happy to uh, provide info. And of course, Sam's info is in the description as well. Thanks very much and enjoy. All right, so I'm here with the Rally Monsters, Laura and Allie. <laughs> yeah, we did that. <laughs> so why would I call you the Rally Monsters? What what date is this? <laughs> what was special happened yesterday? Well, it's June 3rd. <laughs> and so yesterday, Halifax opened to like patios. <laughs> and uh, amazing. Nice and it, yeah, and it was like 25 degrees. And so that's where you could have found us yesterday. <laughs> Perfect. I, I think that's not only relatable, but that's goals. And that helps put in perspective, likely a lot of what we'll talk about, which is um, school life balance or, you know, is, is balance bullshit or is it attainable or is it? <laughs> so I'm sure we'll see some threads, but I, I love that. Uh, I was out on my patio yesterday. <laughs> so I, I think I likely paced myself, I don't know, a little bit better just because <laughs> with age comes wisdom or honestly just a little lack of ability to bounce up so you got some coffee you got um some, by the way um i need to mention this uh, and i'll make sure he listens to this but one time so during finals some of the students came in and they looked so like so sick and i was actually genuinely concerned and then one was so sunburned and i did not put it together i legit was like are you okay are you feeling okay and then i got an email like the next day by the way we were really hung over and like so and so forgot to put on sunscreen and like i just went off and i'm like oh yes so anyways all that to say is welcome thank you for doing this podcast um so which one of you is laura <laughs> all right and that makes you Allie <laughs> all right just for the listeners and yeah so what's awesome about this is you're my first duo and thank you for agreeing to be on the same um screen just because I haven't quite figured out how to do the three split screens and that would have been we might have also got some awkward sound because you guys not only um did a lot of your undergrad together but you also live together yeah, yeah. <laughs> perfect <laughs> um all right and um you still live together you just graduated and we are in 2021 which means that you just did basically your last all of your last year and some of your final bits of third year online um so first off we got our grad email <laughs> congrats grad you graduated <laughs> Was there any doubt, like, even though you knew and you saw the numbers, was there any bit that was just like, ah, when you saw that? Absolutely. Well, so um, I kept getting Brightspace no notifications from one of my classes. It was like, you haven't logged into Brightspace in, in two days. You're missing deadlines. And so I was like, continue. And I was like, maybe I failed this class. I was like, what is, I was like, how did this happen? So when I got that email, I still get those emails. I, I just ignore them now. I delete them. <laughs> But I was like, there were a couple days where I was like, what did I miss? Like, I thought I missed an assignment or something that it was like, you're missing deadlines. And I was like, I thought I graduated. I have nightmares like that, but you legit have actual notifications. So yeah. Yeah, after we hang up, I might, <laughs> we can always like log on and I'll show you how to like <laughs> delete all of them. <laughs> it's like, goodbye. Like, I have my email, trusted, verify, I am graduated. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, oh my God. I was like, this is not good. I was like, I don't know what I did, but I didn't graduate. Oh, man. So we first met each other uh, about a year and a half ago, I would say. Is that more or less true? Yeah. 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 And Laura, um, I first got to 
know and hear of you in class, but Ali, I actually heard of you a little bit before that because um, I worked with one of your friends, um, Sasha, in first year. And then um, she had said that her and another commerce person were also, it was a minor in computer science, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah so you have major in accounting and a minor in computer science. Mm-hmm. And yeah, not only represented in the accounting world, but also represented computer science. So yeah. just to you real quick, what, what was your thought process behind doing an accounting major with a computer science minor? Um, yeah, I kind of got right into it in first year. I didn't know what kind of elective to take. And my mom was like adamant that I couldn't take a fluffy one, which was like so angering at the time. I was like, no, I want to take like intro to anything. Um, but my mom really pushed me to do comms. I could was like, it's a changing world, like tech. And I like very much begrudgingly signed up for comm 101 or 1101 um or not com see like com sci <laughs> and um and I just actually liked it like I was very surprised by how much I found it like interesting in the logical process behind coding and learning about it um and so I just kept taking it and then I think Sasha was the one who was like I think I'm gonna minor in it and at that point I had already had like all of the same credits that she did and um I'm not sure what her logical like what why she got into it we signed up independently even though we knew each other from high school um and so it just kind of worked out that I was like well I mean I'm like halfway there Mm -hmm. and I'm still enjoying it there were times where I definitely didn't (laughs) but um at that time I was definitely still enjoying it and so I just kind of stuck with it there wasn't necessarily like a huge I like really liked um that I know it now, like in hindsight, I was like very glad that I did it. But during the time, I just kind of was going with the flow, if I'm being honest. (laughs) Yeah, no. And I think that uh, there's literature that supports that we are like, we're story based, right? So we listen, we learn through stories, we like stories, and oftentimes we rationalize through stories. So I really like that it's honest that you're like, you can remember back and say, no, like, this is what I was thinking. This is why I did it. Versus um, the literature supports that people will not not intentionally make up stories, but they'll just, they'll put together a narrative that makes it sound cohesive. So no, kudos to you because lots of people are sitting here like, wow, I, that's awesome. She knew, but I don't know. But now they're like, okay, it's good to not, not necessarily know to take people who have your best interest in mind, in your case, your mother, and then, you know, give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, somebody in a podcast that just released and she was big about dabbling. Go try something out, go try it out, take a course, take you know, um, an online free course, take, you know, watch some YouTube videos, like just go dabble. Uh, mm-hmm. Cause you know, do enough dabbling or do enough courses, you're doing this degree anyways. And then you might be like, well, actually like I have a little bit more to go and now I have a minor. So yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And I will to say to the other point though, that like dabbling, I totally agree, but I wasn't able to dabble because of it. So I feel like oh. it's important to note that like, um, for people maybe listening that like, I chose to not dabble because I couldn't like all of my electives were taken. Um, but I enjoyed it enough to stick with it. And I guess there's like, it goes both ways. And I, and I will push back on that because <laughs> you, while you couldn't dabble in an elective world, you can still dabble like now you can even as busy and we'll get into like what you're busy with now, even though it's June 3rd uh, and it's more than just patios uh, (laughs) that you can like dabble. Like I still dabble. I'm actually taking a science. Oh, what is it? Science of well-being or science of happiness. It's like the number one rated course uh, through, through Yale or number one, like most taken course through Yale and it's through course era and it's free. Like it's, great yeah. it's you know little bits it's dabbling and I'm like well who wouldn't want to be a little bit happier or know about the science of happiness or like why not so yeah. you know just keep dabbling um but I will also give you lots of grace because I don't think I read a book that wasn't assigned for about a year after I graduated <laughs> so <laughs> I needed I needed some time <laughs> Uh, Oh my gosh. Okay. So that brings us um, through some of your uh, back history through undergrad. Um, Laura, how about you? What did your elective journey look like? I took the complete opposite approach and I picked um, random courses that I thought would be fun. Sometimes it turned out to be more work than I anticipated and was doing more work for my electives than my um, business courses. Uh, first year I decided to take Spanish 
that was it was fun and interesting and I really enjoyed it but it was so much work so, did you know any Spanish before you started <laughs> uh no so all through high school I did French and I thought like oh it'll be like kind of similar no <laughs> um and then I just picked up random courses here and there one of the best ones I did was last like the, my last semester uh history of rock and roll so fun if you have an open elective take it Stephen Bauer great he made I I wanted to watch his lectures nice saying a lot like if I was in the room she'd be like jamming <laughs> to her lectures it was great <laughs> it was entertainment while I'm like grinding computer science and like hating <laughs> I'm listening to one zero 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 one zero zero. Yeah. Neat. Okay. And then how did the two of you know each other? Did you meet Adele or did you? We went to the same high school um, mm -hmm. and we were kind of like rugby friends. Yeah. Like we played rugby together. And so we like chatted when we were on the pitch and stuff. And like, we'd have a, we had a couple classes together kind of, but like we were never like, close. close. <laughs> we like knew like, each other. We're yeah. nice. <laughs> um, but then when we came here, we just, yeah. we were both in the same program. All of our classes were the same. Yeah. It was like a familiar face, which I feel like was like super because <laughs> Sasha and I like both came here. We knew each other quite well. And so we like kind of paired together. I have to give mad respect to Laura who like went out and like met new people and like made new friends for like first year <laughs> um but we were like we started hanging out in first year and we've been pretty close since I would say I mean we have never not lived together basically for the past yeah for the past years. like three years <laughs> oh yeah. wow and that is that says a lot because I can only imagine the dynamics of you know being in the same classes together and then the other elements of living and yeah, being in the same classes. Was it ever competitive? Um, either like competitive, yeah, <laughs> dishwashing or classes or all of it? What? Have we ever been competitive in no? No, I don't think so. It's only when Laura makes fun of me because I don't have clean enough. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if that's competitive though, because I'm like well aware <laughs> that I'm definitely the lacking member there. I um get bullied. <laughs> Not actually, I shouldn't talk about that. But I get very teased very heavily for that, but I wouldn't say it was competitive. It, it was more like just school stuff, because we're both stubborn when we're studying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're like, it either works really well because we're like both on the same wavelength and we study really hard and really well together, or it does not go well at all. There's not really a middle. <laughs> what do you do when it's not working well? Do you just take time away or? Yeah, yeah, we study in our, like, you know, if things are going really poorly, we'll either just like study in our own rooms or. A lot of the time we just need to, it comes because we need a break from what we're doing. So then um, at that point we just step away. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's a good indicator that we're done for the day. <laughs> when we're like starting to get testy with one another because we're like okay <laughs> great no I think I think that's awesome because it's not about just work 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 it's you know letting the brain you know soak in all this stuff all the hard work that you've done and process everything and yeah taking a break you can't just kind of like keep smashing it in so no it's awesome that it sounds like developing processes and really leveraging those processes over time it used to be like our, okay, let's walk to the Starbucks at the corner and get um, coffee, but then they closed it. Um, <laughs> so sad. <laughs> but yeah, I, the one thing that I will, I think we're really lucky is that when we stop studying, even if we were like uh, mad at each other while studying, we like, are, because we have to, we got very good at like compartmentalizing, being like, we're not actually mad at each other. We're not actually like, you know, we're just, we're just like we're just overwhelmed, overwhelmed yeah. in studying and getting testy um so once we stop studying usually it's like I don't think we've ever fought after we're done. <laughs> we close the books we just you close it and you're like okay I want to go get Starbucks <laughs> so it works out that's, true. that's it that's fantastic so right a few of my third years right now uh so going to fourth year they you know started they did their calm uh calm summer online and they, you know, a lot of them, when I talk uh, to them, they and did office hours, they, they didn't have anybody else in the program, like they decided to be accounting majors, or maybe are still deciding to be accounting majors. 
Mm-hmm. They don't have that kind of accounting buddy, but they maybe want to. Because so some people don't, and you know they don't want to necessarily, or they're cool with like going to class, or they're cool if it happens, cool if it doesn't. But to the people that you know perhaps want a little bit of what you guys have, you know, have somebody to study together, have somebody to not study together, have somebody to study with, and then go to a patio with. Um, how would you recommend to them um, going from will likely be in person in the fall? How would you suggest for them to, you know, find their, their accounting person or persons? I mean, like, I can't take credit for this because uh, one of our really good friends uh, just sat down beside me one class and started talking to me and complaining about her contacts because she saw that I wore glasses. And like, that was in first year intro to accounting. Yeah. She's also doing the program that we're doing this summer right now. Um, yeah I, uh, one thing that I would suggest is like if you don't know anyone um like I always like looked for people um in the class who kind of had the same engagement level that I did like I participated in class but I was never one of those people that like was really actively going for it like if I had a question I'd much prefer pro- like to approach the professor after that's just who I am um and so I feel like I don't have the guts to just sit down beside someone and just be like contacts um I'm not like that like I'm an outgoing person but not like that so I always looked for people who like kind of raised their hand about the same and like brought up similar points that I was thinking about or like something like that and then you know maybe approaching them after I got really lucky because this was so easy for the two of us we kind of just got not forced into it but we would kind of just walk the same path and we're both there Mm -hmm. um but like especially with accounting classes they're so small once you get up to third and and fourth year and you're all in the same ones yeah like everybody's taking the same thing so you kind of get to know people and I feel like even if you're feeling alone like people know you and you know people and just like talking to them I don't know yeah like no no this is perfect I think like engagement because we even like as educators talk on engagement and there's so many different ways it's not just that out you know it's it's the leaning in it's like they're nodding like just you they're present like you look at for peers that are also present and you know because that's a good indication perhaps they do take this seriously like you do and they may or may not want to like collaborate or you know just because you go study once together doesn't mean you have to study forever or grab a copy or like you know do this project or just do homework in the same room like it's you can I guess you can dabble there as well um but like and you bring up you're in the same classes and I would agree um it it was just really interesting um the two two years before you graduating was my first, my first like group of like fourth years. Uh, and they went, a few of them went off to a grad program afterwards and started meeting people to kind of like what you guys did. They saw them in class, like in high school, maybe they had like some, you know, conversations like here and there, but they didn't actually get to know them till afterwards. And they, they didn't express regret per se, but they were just like, oh, like, I can't believe I didn't like try to get to know you. I can't believe I saw you for so long or, you know, I'm like, it took me like, (laughs) it took them to go to another program to actually like have conversations. So, you know, um, feel free to just have them now. And the worst, like I've had lots of copies, like one-time copies with people, you know, and either they didn't feel my vibe or I, you know, just, it just, you know, doesn't, (laughs) <laughs> I'm not anywhere for where and I don't think they are and I have no actually real recollection other than I know it probably happened um yeah no and fourth year just just so that one of the reasons why I think it's important um on a scale of on a scale of one to ten how difficult would you say first year accounting courses were you for each of you and I'll bounce to uh Laura then Allie and then go back and forth so first year accounting courses just in general, scale of one to 10, 10 being the most difficult. Like what, how I think of them now or at the time? At the time. <laughs> how you think of them now? Oh, now account, first year accounting, like three, three, three. Okay. four maybe. That's yeah. Amazing. yeah. I would say higher for myself if I'm being honest. Yeah. I think it does come from, I really struggled um, in first year with, the first accounting class. Laura yeah. taught me the entire course, like within the first couple, like few days before the exam, because I just didn't grasp it. Um, and I don't know how much of it I would retain that we didn't use. So I'm going to go with like a six, maybe uh, five, maybe. I don't know. I just remember I was really struggled with them. 
yeah, three, four, five, six, and then flip it around. Um, so Ali, you first, then third year. So that would have been cost management and uh, IFA, IFA one. Probably like a, about the same, if I'm being honest, probably yeah. around a five or a six, I think it, for me. I would, I would agree a five or a six. The, I feel like because we were learning revenue in IFA one when everything went online. Oh yeah. <laughs> it might push it up a little bit more, but like yeah. that's a, that's an, that's, that's an exception. Yeah, yeah. Because literally in the middle of learning revenue, like IFRS 15, which is, is a biggie, it's a doozy. Um, we, it was like March 12th or 13th when we went from in class to having a week break you know, yeah. so a 12th of your classes being wiped out and then um, online. So that big transition. So yeah, layers upon layers. All right. And then, so we're at about a three, four, five, six for first year, about five, six for third year, um, fourth year as a whole. So that is your audit, IFA two and tax one in the fall and your advanced accounting two. Um, so like consult, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh gosh. Uh, hedging, like FX, um, AA1 case writing, and then tax two corporate as a whole, what is your fourth year accounting difficulty? I would think it might be like a seven or an eight, not necessarily because it was all hard content, but it's also a lot to like manage and balance Mm -hmm. all of the classes yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. yeah. I would say like an eight, probably maybe a nine. <laughs> it's like a definitely a parts. So I could see it being a 10, but I would say like generally <laughs> I would probably go eight or nine. <laughs> what parts would be a 10, Allie? <laughs> Consult. <laughs> Straight okay. up. That's I studied for that exam. I who knows? <laughs> you just yeah. push them together and cut out the extra. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. I wish. It's not so easy. <laughs> it's like, the concept seems so simple. Once yeah, I sorry, that, there's a reason why we cover it for like four or five weeks. <laughs> it's, it's awful. Um, okay. No. And so the reason why I, you know, I spent some time saying like, essentially, how do you, you know, everybody pretty much feels like, hey, maybe I want to work with somebody or maybe like it'd be a little bit more fun to, uh, to know that I'm not in this alone. And yes, you have your prof help. Yes, the, I, I think there's great resources, but there's something about just being in it with somebody else, uh, especially as you kind of go up in difficulty and content and then just managing it. Like, you know, having that buddy that's like, hey, did you do that assignment? And you're just like, oh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> but now I will. Um, and having that kind of that double check. So thank you. Um, and thanks for being so honest um, and open. Like it is, it is difficult. There's, you know, in CPA, um, people about halfway through will start to get like even more frustrated. And I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's difficult. If it were easy, there'd be more and then we can command like the salaries that we do or the different opportunities, or if it was easy, you know, people wouldn't need us, right? So like we, it's hard because it is a skill set. It's a learned skill set. And the reason why I'm comparing the difficulties in fourth year and our Dow, you know, undergrad in accounting um, become accounting is because the most of the concepts that you learn, the level of difficulty is the same, perhaps like a little bit harder in your CPA journey, but in your CPA journey, it's about how do you apply what you learn? And now how do we mix the tax and accounting and financial reporting and management accounting? Because clients won't come up with you, to you and separate um, their questions into tax <laughs> and into taxes payable. And they won't, they won't be kind because that's not how problems happen in real life. They're not silos. So it's funny because it's not the level of you know, content that increases the difficulty in CPA. Um, it's that applying and that's figuring out, you know, what are they asking me? Do I have the skill set? Wait, I do. How do I communicate that to a wide variety of users, a partner, a junior, uh, a client, a financially sophisticated client, a financially, you know, not sophisticated client, you know, um, because we as accountants, we want to add value and speak to everybody appropriately and respectfully and solve their problems. 
So like kudos to you for providing these tools and these um, suggestions. Do you have any other like suggestions on perhaps what you wish you would have known or been told? Um, like look at yourself exactly one year ago. You were heading into fourth year, regardless if it's online or in person, you know it's going to be difficult. What advice do you wish that you would have heard from somebody or that you would give yourself? It's doable. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but it, you can do it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, don't spend four hours on your first case that Tammy gives you and she tells you to do it in an hour because mm -hmm. even the four hours you spend, you're still not going to do it correctly. <laughs> That is that really is good advice. Yeah. So, so don't sink the four hours. Sink the hour that she tells you to do it. Yeah. Because there's a reason for that. And then just learn from it. Yeah. That's really good advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of don't accept defeat. Try. Try. But you're gonna, the first time you get a result about a case, you're gonna feel stupid. <laughs> and that's okay. So yeah, and that's really interesting because in the first semester, like first week, you'll start doing CPA questions with me. Mm -hmm. And now looking back, I'm sure you're like, oh, those are no big deal. But do you recall how you felt the first time you did a CPA way question? I opened it and like closed it at first. So I'm like, I, I don't know. I just remember really struggling to put it into words. Like I really, mm -hmm. even though I knew um, like what I needed to like work on and what I needed to fix, whatever for, oh, I guess we're not the debriefs, but not even the still the CPA, I just didn't know what was expected of me. And I, cause you would always put the max sentences on it where it was like max one sentence for the, the whatever the section, section. Yeah. the problem section. And I would just, I could never, I always struggled to put it into a sentence. And I think that that was <laughs> where my, I just couldn't put it into words. Yeah. It's just, you have to wrap your head around a different way of thinking and doing work Yeah. when it comes to like cases. Mm -hmm. Yes. And like, I know that I've heard from students before saying like, oh, accounting should be numbers. And I'm like, mm -hmm. like open up some financial statements. What are the financial statements? They're all the number statements. And then most of them are the notes. <laughs> explaining what the heck um, the financial, like the numbers are, and they're all referred to as financial statements. The notes are part of that. So yeah. no, I agree. It is hard, um, but it's just so funny how like now you're like, oh, CPA questions. Yeah, that was hard. And then cases are hard um, because you graduated, you know, officially uh, recently via email. <laughs> but, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you were done with majority of your classes and everything almost up to two months ago. So yeah right <laughs> like it goes it goes by quick um but yeah you still remember like oh crap like there's these steps and these levels and so when you're like you can do it you know are you are you still reminding yourself now like hey you can do it because you're you're still challenging yourselves you're still stepping up Mm -hmm. I yeah I am I like I there are some times where I like open a document to do work and it'll be blank and I'm just like wow I can't do this <laughs> I'm just like no I there's no way um and usually I have to close it and then come back to it because I have to work out that I can do it but it's true like because it gets harder and it's similar like application and putting it into words and so I have to tell myself it pretty well every time I do any work <laughs> yeah no, I I can do it um and the good thing is, yeah, it does get harder, but that's because you're building new, new skill sets, right? It's not, it's, you're mastering one and then you're moving on. And it's like, well, frig, like, when am I there? And it's like pretty soon, right? When you write the CV and then, you know, then you're kind of like, okay, what next direction? How do I want to grow now? How do I want to apply this? And then you get to kind of take more of a, con more control over how much, how fast, you know, when to push forward, when to hold back, when to, you know, um, do those sorts of things. Whereas now it's, well, there is some choice on how to go about it, what programs to do. Um, it's still, you're still going to that same like CP goal. Uh, Laura, just real quick before, because I want to go back to Ali when you said blank page. I do want to get back to that. But Laura, what advice would you give to you exactly one year ago today? Um, do a better job of doing your work 
smartly and not spinning your wheels on something for too long. One piece of tangible, like one, um, what would you do to somebody who's spinning? What would you tell them to do? Step away, like yeah. go for a walk, get mm -hmm. coffee, just even like leave the room you're in. Yeah. And just like distance yourself from it for a minute. Because a lot of the time I found that when I was spinning and left, once I learned to do that, <laughs> um, when I came back down, what I was spinning my wheels about wasn't actually all that difficult or like hard to wrap my head around. It was just like in the moment you were just like stuck you see pushing and you're like more, more study, more this, more that. No, I should actually get a sticky note and put it to my computer and say, stop spinning because it's still to this day, it's hard. And mm -hmm. then sometimes when you come back, you're like, oh, why am I even, I don't even need to do that. Or, you know, or sometimes you solve it and you're like, oh. <laughs> Like the moment you go do something else, um, yeah, you you balance that cash flow statement. True story. It's it's a nice feeling. Um, okay, so Allie, I wanted to talk about the blank page because this brings me to something that I wish that if I were to talk to me um, right before writing a CP, this is what I would have said: is realizing, um, and I realized this about a month out to always set up my outline the way that I was going to write the CP. And like, I always outlined and I, or you at the time, I always outlined, I always, you know, knew what I was going to outline, but just like physically either typing or writing, however you want to do it, having, you know, date, timeline to, from you and then are like user role and just having something on my page. And then as I read, you know, slotting things in, but knowing I didn't wait till I started reading, I literally started typing before I even looked at the page and that shift was huge because now I was just filling in a template, you know, a template that I made that worked for me. And I didn't have that blank page looking back at me. That's really, I was like, I'm going to try to do have, that. I was like, we have a case next week. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Cool. Like, yeah, send me an email or yeah, shoot me and let me know how that works for you. Cause <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And the thing is, that's why, I don't know why it's so important to talk is um, sometimes like I, I, every time I talk with students, past, former, future, um, like, I learn and, you know, we, we're all still learning about like what works for us. And that's part of kind of the fun and why I think I connect like a lot with you guys is you're always looking to both have fun in the moment, but like, hmm, how can I work? Like Laura said, like a little bit smarter, like, you know, what about this? Like, it's not just about like head down without any fun. Um, hmm. So that brings us to, I said, you're still doing the step ups and step ups. So what the heck are you guys doing right now? Uh, we're in the Queen's GDIP program. Ah! Yes, we are doing our diploma in accounting. <laughs> <laughs> so you just finished your BCom accounting major. You just came through. We refer to it as the accounting boot camp, fourth year boot camp. And before you even graduated, <laughs> you started last month about this time, you're about a month in, um, the uh, accounting diploma, the graduate uh, diploma in accounting through Queen's University. Mm -hmm. kudos to you um so what made you guys um decide to do it and then how's it going um so when I was on some of my co-ops um a lot of the staff members who I was on teams with um told, told me that this was like an option over the mm -hmm. summer to do like your accounting classes for CPA um, and one of the guys was like, if you listen to a single thing I say this summer, it's, it's this, it's do a program over the summer because it just, it makes it easier to continue the steps while you're working. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mine was pretty similar. And I think mine was like a lot of kind of seeing what my peers were doing and there was so much talk and like, I know we... I, I think Laura had, um, not this Laura, but like Professor Laura oh, yeah. um, <laughs> posted like in our tax class, some information from people who answered questions who had done it and they were, you know, raving about the difficulty, but also um, like that it was the right choice. And on co-ops, I saw people like studying for their, ex like having to go home at like 10 PM and then studying for their exams for on the weekend. And you're like, I, I it, for me, it was like a no brainer to be like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I was like, I can't do that. So I'm good. So that was how I ended up here. <laughs> that's, that's excellent because, and 
these podcasts, I do with people that did a similar like quote fast track and they did it through the modules or they did it. Um, I haven't had somebody yet, um, but I do plan on it. Um, doing two summers. So yours is going to be one summer where you have ta- you'll have core one and core two equivalents and tax and insurance. And then next year you'll do capstone one through PEP through the professional education program without mm-hmm. like all the other PEP module people mm-hmm. and capstone two and write the CP. So you have done it in such a way that you don't have to do core one and core two tax and insurance while working at nights or on the weekends. Um, some people chose to do two summers in which they'll go through um, and have capstone one and capstone two as well. And so you have a diploma, they'll have a, a master's. Um, so there's, a, of course, a different cost, um, different locations, um, different time commitments, but both are ways that you don't have to kind of do work and school at the same time. Uh, another person that has been on the podcast, so if you listen to Megan's, Megan Waterhouse, um, she did fast track through the modules. So she took core one and core two at the same time. And then she actually decided to defer her start back at the firm till January. Um, so she took two months in the summer off and then did tax insurance at the same time in the, in the fall. But she could have accomplished the same thing and started in October, like with the rest of the starting by doing core one and core two tax and insurance. The thing is, they're just different programs. Um, so the, the common thing with all of that is not having to work and study. And so, you know, finding a program that you believe in, that you believe is best suited to you and have hearing um, other students experiences and Laura, like that's pretty, like that's pretty big. Um, you know, if you listen to one thing I say like that, that would be very convincing as well. So yeah, you're like, well, wow. him all summer. Yeah. I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> yep. Done. Um, okay. And then, you know what, I have had, um, or I will have people that did do the modules and work and it is doable. And sometimes, you know, it's just about what journey do you want and kind of, um, cause some people graduate and they're like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to think about school for four months. Right. And, and that's okay too. So it's just what, what is best uh, for you. And I did a little bit of both. So I worked and I did, um, some fast track. Um, like, but worked like a part-time job and some fast track over the summer. And then when I started full-time in the fall, I did, um, some school, like some modules and yeah, like there were some Wednesday nights where I was like, this is, uh, this is difficult. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't kind of have all the options that are available now. I think that's why it's always really exciting and why I stay involved in the profession is because, you know, options are growing and people do have choice. And, you know, from what I've heard from three, three years of former students now is that Queens is an excellent choice. And if it's, you know, financially feasible, if it works for you, if it works within your interests of being like, yeah, I'm cool to, you know, finish school, have a couple of weeks in between and start this intense program, you know, so far you're a month in and it sounds like no, it sounds like it's difficult, but no regrets. Yeah, no regrets no for regrets. sure, but there was the other day I think Laura was on the couch and I was on the floor we were studying and Laura was like wow I thought I was burnt out last semester <laughs> and we're just like chilling there like barely doing any work and I was like yeah I was like I, got nothing. I was like yeah I was like it's true um so it's definitely hard but I'm yeah. glad no no regret regrets from my part yeah no regrets in doing it it's yeah. just I'm sure I'll be happier once it's done <laughs> yeah I think that you'll I don't know you're sending yourself you're sending your future October self like um a big you know nap like you can just go home at 10 o'clock and if you don't want to open up your computer you don't have to yeah 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 which is nice um what did you do for the three weeks in between um I spent some of it in quarantine actually (laughs) yeah so that was nice because um the border closed and so um Jacob came and so we were in quarantine for about a good amount of it <laughs> um and then we kind of just enjoyed the nice Halifax weather it was yeah was like it was nice yeah there were some really nice days but I started selling some of our furniture on Facebook marketplace mm-hmm. uh nice <laughs> just going here <laughs> so if you have any <laughs> so if you're going to fourth year and you need some furniture <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I was all a 
alone in this house and um that was my new hobby yeah I got like continuous text being like hey I, like I just got a picture of some random object in our home and it would just be like this is going up on marketplace and I'd be like I okay <laughs> like, <that's good." laughs> didn't matter what it was I just like okay <laughs> oh my gosh by the way I don't think I followed up with you too you have um a wall of uh oh my gosh why am I Bubbly. I was like, don't call it buble. Don't call it because Laura, Prof Laura always calls it buble when we talk. Um, and so I sent my friend the picture and she was like, those are the best students ever. <laughs> she loved your shrine. So I was trying to find uh, the picture and help and put in the thumbnail or put it in. But oh man, just have fun. It sounds like that's been a theme. Like it sounds like it's been a lot of hard work and it's still, it hasn't stopped. Um, how are you able to kind of weave in fun or are you is it is it all or nothing or how do you manage it it's definitely every week looks different for mm -hmm. sure um but the nice thing I have found is with the courses that we're taking right now you have one a day and it's for three hours mm -hmm. so like you can kind of do with that what you will mm -hmm. like um ours are in the afternoon so I've been like going on walks in the morning or like making sure that all of my work that needs to be done is done in the morning so then when we close our computers at five after class um then we can kind of yeah, hang like out they're shut for the day <laughs> yeah which is nice I feel like we've been pretty good at balancing the fun component there have been weeks um that we don't do anything because our like head is in our computers all day um but like this week there's like not necessarily as much demand in the assignments don't get me started on next week that's gonna be terrible but this week has been like kind of nice and relaxed and so you know we got through class and the second class was done we shot our laptops and we're like okay our work for the day is done because we did it in the morning and then you know went to a patio um and like got to enjoy so like it looks different I'd agree with you and that so it looks different every day and it sounds like you're compartmentalizing as well because you know that next week is going to look different but you're like let's focus on this week yeah yeah, yeah. I, I would say I'm trying I don't know if I'm <laughs> we've gotten better at it. yeah this program has been like fourth year at Dal was like a good test of the, your ability to compartmentalize. I think especially because ours was online. So we were doing school and living in the same space, which I know everyone's been struggling with. Um, but we've definitely, like, I've definitely gotten better uh, just being like, okay, shut, done. If, if, if I'm going to stress about it, then I shouldn't be stopping. And that for me has kind of been an interesting lesson to learn because I'm like, well, if I'm going to be panicked, like if I'm not going to be able to enjoy going out or like doing something, then should I be and or should I like reevaluate my um, plans? And that's been an interesting lesson to learn. That is really interesting because then it would almost seem like, hey, maybe I should do more then. But then should you always be doing more or does that no so sometimes is it having that conversation with yourself like hey like this is what enough like this is you almost have to define what enough is beforehand and then just trust yourself that you know enough of enough is perfect and you need to go reset mm -hmm. I also think it is dependent on your personality because I if I'm stressing that is when you know I'm like you know I'm not I'm a pretty laid back person in that sense so if I'm stressing that's when I know I'm like okay this is real <laughs> I was like this is a problem and so I don't think it would work for someone who is like continuously stressed about things going on at school so I think that's a good thing to note <laughs> so don't do it if you're a stressed person <laughs> Laura how about you I've just, it's definitely, I've gotten better at it for sure. And defining like a, a, like an end point because I would go until, cause well, even in, at the end of third year, when we started doing online stuff, mm -hmm. it was so easy for me to just start the next thing once I finished something, because it was like, I'm at home, I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of continued that in fourth year first semester but then they I I guess like I realized that like why am I why am I still sitting in my computer right now doing something that I don't need to be doing when like my roommates are watching a movie 
like I don't need to be doing this right now so I'm very much learning to like set those boundaries sticking to them is a work in progress Mm -hmm. but I at least have vocalized them (laughs) um which is a good step but like yeah even sharing now like more is not more sharing it helps reinforce it for yourself. And also you'll likely be giving other people permission that, you know, find themselves in September, like, holy crap, I want to do more. And oh, look, Sam's syllabus is kind of set up. So I can do more. There's a lot that I can just like work ahead on, but it's like, no, 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 that'll be there next week. Don't worry. Just, just trust the process, like go through, you'll, you'll get to the end soon enough. And then there'll be another thing to start. So don't, don't rush there. It'll be there. It always will be. <laughs> I'm sure you. <laughs> Not going anywhere. Hey, uh, do you guys have any favorite books or like books, either fiction or nonfiction, things that have helped you escape, things that have helped you solve problems? Any books that you would, you know, recommend to anybody who's, you know, maybe has some time or, you know, wants to enjoy or solve some problems? Uh, I have actually just read, it's called Wine Girl by... I don't remember who it's by, but it's it's about the like youngest female sommelier in the world. And like, you like learn her life story and you learn all these things about how hard it is to become a sommelier and how they drink like this much. And they can tell you where the grape was um, like from. (laughs) Uh, Good growth. (laughs) (laughs) Built. Really interesting. Cool. I it's on my it's the next one on my list but um I don't really read. <laughs> I, was like, I am kind of on that wavelength where unless it's like the fluffiest and most useless thing to recommend or read I um don't <laughs> I have gotten better and I would say that I like some of our assigned readings from like you know uh, what did we let read lean uh, lean, in. lean in that was a good book for <laughs> organizational behavior um, but you won't really catch me reading um, much else so I don't have a good recommendation. Yeah, Allie, and before we started this call, I did I did admit that it took me a whole year before after my undergrad um, before I picked up a book like that I got to choose. I was like <laughs> need a break, um, but. Uh, Laura, I did write down Wine Girl because I think that, that I think I would enjoy that. So thank you. I, I did. I watched Psalm on Netflix and mm-hmm. that was about, yeah, um, about, but it, I feel like it was for, for men. And I would really like to see what the kind of compare and contrast against what, especially the youngest female, because I feel like that's something that we can relate to here being female and also being sometimes, I don't know, I know for much of my career, I was sometimes the only female and oftentimes the youngest person in the room that's changing now um, in both in both aspects one I'm getting older but also more female and like just a greater emphasis on you know making sure we have a lot of voices and a lot of different diverse voices at the table um, so was there parts of it that you kind of like felt empowered when you when you you know to kind of surround yourself by young you know like people doing cool things it was like, it was more so I didn't realize um, how different her experience would be trying to like break into this world because like um, she, like one of the things she was saying was even after she won like certain competitions or whatever, people who she was serving wouldn't trust her, even though like it's her job, they like made her bring a bottle back because they said it was like ruined or whatever she's like no you're like no but she did it anyway and because they wouldn't accept what she was bringing on I'm just like wow (laughs) whoa whoa yep (laughs) um I think I will enjoy this book thank you uh, okay, I know we are getting into the last little bit because it sounds like you have school in a few moments. <laughs> so the last thing I want to do is be the prof. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? I'm sorry, my, my old prof held me. <laughs> uh, so in the last few moments, um, oh, um, before we get into the last, last question, um, I love this. We had a call and we had a talk during office hours. And this is something that I don't see being very prevalent um, with many people. So this is why it really stuck out. Um, what does it mean to be solutions based and how do you apply it in your own life? 
Uh, yeah. So uh, I did. I don't. I definitely can't take credit. I wasn't me. I don't remember who it was. Oh, regardless of who started it, like yeah, who like, implement it, which is huge. So what does that look like? Um, it looks. It's kind of a good way to like change your frame of mind because it started as like a, a joke. joke. Like it was something. It was in our friend group, and I guess like a little backstory for everyone is we um we like to joke around about being a solutions oriented friend group. And sometimes when people will say something that's like bummy or like doesn't fit, we'll be like, that sounds like a problem. Um, Where solution. Yeah, be like, that sounds like a problem or a solutions oriented group, figure it out. <laughs> um, and so that's kind of where it stemmed from. And then now we kind of do it in like real life a bit. I would say it's mainly still a joke, but it helps because it forces you to, you like put something out into the universe and someone calls you on it and says, okay, that's a problem. Like, what are you going to do about it? And so by saying we're a solutions oriented group, it kind of forces us to be like, okay, what actually is a solution? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, and I love that it's it's friendly and it's playful, but it's also impactful. So it can be something, I think the example um, that we talked about was it can be something small, like, hey, where do we go for dinner? And somebody would provide a suggestion. And if you don't want to go there, you can say, how about this place instead? So making it a solution. So sure, I don't want, I don't know, ooh. They're like, I really want Salvatore's. And then somebody else is like, oh, that sounds good. What else might be good would be, you know, sushi at Hamachi. <laughs> it's right beside it. You know, we might, you know, I'm really feeling like, um, uh, like sushi. Uh, so it's about providing the solution versus knocking down and kind of providing that positive spin. So when I heard that, I was like, ah, oh, like, yes, like I love it. And then, yeah, you can definitely be a little bit more playful if like you're out and somebody, I don't know, they're like, my feet hurt because you're, you know, if you're like me, every once, once a year, you would wear shoes that you you know, you have no business wearing for any length of time. And yet you're out and your feet hurt. And instead of saying my feet hurt, be like, I'm going to take off my shoes or I'm going to stop dancing for a little bit, or this is what I'm going to do kind of turn um, problem into a solution and kind of even circumventing that complaint. So I flip and love that. So I'm looking forward to a whole cohort of solution based <laughs> accountants, right? And, you know, sometimes the solution might just be reaching out and saying, Hey, can you can you help? I'm going to spin. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so last question. And this is, uh, I'm hoping maybe that you'll have a different answer, possibly you have the same. Um, whoever wants to answer first. Um, we are all on different paths. And we need to celebrate everybody's unique and different paths. Uh, Cause the coolest thing is that you are the expert of you. Just like I'm the expert of me. I can't be anything but me. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to try. Um, I'm the expert of me. I'll, I'll let you know what I am. Um, so that being said, what is your definition of success? I'll do it first. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think mine would be to constantly be challenged so I'm constantly learning new things like yes the thought of not knowing an answer scares me but when I figure it out or when I learn something about it it just makes me so happy mm -hmm. and I I just want to constantly be challenged and keep learning mm -hmm. that's like, <laughs> like sorry I'm still like kind of spinning my wheels here yeah. um yeah for your, your time? Okay. Um, I was like, I don't want to interrupt. This is an important question. Um, so for me, I guess, like, I more frame it as in, like, if I'm proud of it and I'm happy, um, then I, and I'm surrounded by the right people to enjoy it with. Um, I think for me, I'm like, I find it, I find that I feel successful um, if I'm like happy right now and I'm proud of what I've done to get here. Um, and I have like, you know, good friends or um, family to like enjoy it with or celebrate it. And I'm, I'm nodding both because I love your answers, but really that doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. I love them because you're, they're your answers. And I love that even you both have been through so much, you know, this year in your undergrads together uh, and you are your own unique individuals and you are a great team. So thank you so, so much for spending this time with us and investing um, in the generation of Dow 
commerce accounting grads to come. Um, am I cool to link any information in kind of down below, maybe LinkedIn or some emails? For sure. Yeah, for sure. And I will be freshly out of GDIP. So if people have questions, because I know I have no idea what to expect, um, definitely <laughs> yeah, send us an email. Does it, you don't need to know us, like we'll happily answer. Yeah. So <laughs> that'd be great. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you.